And now, if you would, let me introduce you to my world record leg trap. Hey, folks, do me a favor. Practice CPR, catch, photo, and release. The future of vision is truly in your hands. Big fish. Big fish! This side over here. That is a 50 fish. <laughs> Folks, you're seeing it right now. My 100th just came in the net at Witch Bay Camp. Holy smokes, Rocky. He ate that thing. The summer sun never sets upon the Alaskan pike of the Unoka in the heart of breathtaking Alaska. Evenings will be shared reliving the battles of Monster Pike. The Midnight Sun Trophy Pike Hunt is on aboard the 67-foot luxury houseboat, and you're in command. If you're not, you should be. Contact the Midnight Sun Trophy Pike Adventures by calling 800-440-7453 or email them at mstpa50 at gmail.com. Hi everyone, Bob Nusikomer here for Grant Rods. You know, musky fishing's a tough deal. And the job's not done till she's in the bag. Well, how do you do that? It's pretty simple. You need big dog rods from Grant Rods. For your next rod, call them at 847-577-0848. Building custom rods since 1983. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Hey, welcome back. I've got a special for you folks tonight. I don't know if anybody was watching the news or watching the media around the fishing world, but uh, there was a gentleman that, that really put it to a fish, but he wasn't targeting the fish. But let me tell you a little bit about it. It was huge, absolutely huge. And for somebody like myself that's caught a few of these big creatures, I consider a 60-inch muskie to be huge. Joe, I've got you on the phone right now. Give us your name there, big guy. Uh, Joe Gensini. Joe Gensini, and you are from? Hennepin, Illinois. Hennepin, Illinois. Now, what's a Hennepin, Illinois guy doing up on Green Bay? Come on. <laughs> uh, a good friend of mine, my fishing partner, Paul Malone, and I were up there uh, practicing and fishing in uh, the Cabela's uh, North American Bass Trail Tournament, the first one of the season. Really? I've, I've, you sent me over a couple of pictures, and to be perfectly candid with you, I got one of the pictures in. Um, okay. I, I didn't get enough time to get them both in, but I do want to make sure that our viewers get to see this gorilla. Now, you're going to, as I understand, there's, there's potentially another encounter with our show, possibly next week, where we're going to be able to see a little bit more than a still shot. Is that correct? You know, we're working on it. Um, Paul and I have fished together for quite some time and all over the country. And, you know, when we caught this fish, and I say we, uh, when we caught this fish, we really didn't realize what we had. So first and foremost, we were worried about getting the fish back in the water. Um, we had we battled the fish for over an hour at the time. Um, we were in my bass boat, you know, which really we weren't equipped to handle a fish of this size. So everything happened so quickly. We really didn't get a ton of great pictures. Uh, we do have a small video that, quite honestly, <laughs> Uh, probably doesn't uh, depict the, the best verbiage <laughs> we were bound by the fish, but, uh, you know, we're, we're working on it. Uh, all we had to capture the moment was our cell phones, and like everybody knows at times, uh, cell phones can outsmart us all. So uh, we're working on it, but uh, needless to say, I mean, it, it was a catch of my lifetime for sure. Oh, absolutely, no question about it. Uh, tell us a little bit about what happened. Tell us the story, because that's what's so interesting to me. Sure, sure. Well, uh, like, like so many stories start, you know, uh, um, um, Paul's a full-time fishing guy, so Paul spends a lot of time on the water. And me, myself, I, I run a, an excavating business, so when we go fishing, uh, nine times out of ten, he's prepared to be fishing that day, and I'm not. And this time was no different. Uh, we got up to Sturgeon Bay late that the, the evening before 
we got out on the water mid morning after you know we we pretty much slept in, kind of got our, our rest. Uh, and uh, about ten o'clock in the morning, we started fishing there in Little Sturgeon Bay. And uh, on my second cast, I hooked into this 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 sixty inch muskie. Um, I, we were fishing, you know, a traditional kind of pre spawn post spawn spot for smallmouth, a, a seven to ten foot drop. Um, and uh, I was throwing a, a black uh, hair jig, you know, a little eight ounce hair jig. Um, uh, I caught, <laughs> ironically, you know, we landed the fish on uh, a six nine medium light uh, spinning rod made by Fitzgerald Rods and uh, uh, using, you know, eight pound Power Pro braided line with an eight pound Seaguar leader, uh, fluorocarbon leader. So it was really just a blessing from God that we even got the fish close to the boat, let alone in it. Um, you know, most of the time us bass fishermen, uh, and I would say Paul and I be in that category of we we cut the fish off or break the fish off uh, uh, when we catch the fish. Uh, it, it's time consuming to get one to the boat, and quite honestly, we weren't targeting muskie for sure. We were out there scouting for smallmouth. So uh, I I initially uh, when I hooked the fish, uh, I thought I had a snag. Truthfully, it was pretty windy. Uh, I I felt the initial bite, which felt just like any other small mouth bite and uh, I set the hook um, the fish really didn't take off and run with it so I just felt a lot of weight on the end of the line uh, and then all of a sudden you know obviously the fish the fish did start to run and uh, she ran back straight out towards the boat to deeper water and in the first few minutes I just kind of played it off as oh yeah a big a big, uh, a big toothy critter and uh <laughs> <laughs> the water is so clear up there this time of year that when I actually got the fish within sight, five six foot down, I can I could I could tell that it was a big fish. I didn't I, I obviously couldn't tell how big a fish it was, but I knew it was big. And at that time, we'd already invested you know ten fifteen minutes. And I looked at Paul, and he kind of looked at me, and he, you know, and we decided, well, let's let's try this out. Let's see if we can get this thing in a boat. So. Um, uh, during the fight, uh, here again, I run a business and I'm terribly busy all the time, so my cell phone's going off, and I wasn't prepared for our fishing trip, so I actually handed the rod to him, and he handed it back to me, and vice versa, and we chased the fish around with the trolling motor for a little over an hour. And, an hour? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we finally, we did finally land the fish, uh, of course, I didn't have a net, um, and and at this point, I, I, I've got to admit, uh, we knew that muskie was out of season, uh -huh. um, so we didn't even know from a legality standpoint, were we supposed to cut the fish off, you know, are we supposed to try to land the fish? We knew we were immediately releasing the fish, um, that was for sure, so... You know, the way it worked out, though, um, we decided to go ahead and land the fish, and uh, I had a small frable net in the boat, and uh, uh, Paul, you know, he had the rod in hand, and I scooped down and scooped her head up, and then sort of wrestled her, bear hugged her over the side of the boat, and uh, was able to take a few nice pictures and, of course, measure and, and, and whatnot. So, um, just a real awesome, awesome, awesome fish. Well, I mean... Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I, I, I mean, I've been all over this country fishing. Uh, Paul's done the same. And, I mean, I can tell you, <laughs> I don't think I've seen anything close to this other than an alligator swim alongside my boat. <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you, you made a lot of musky fishermen jealous. <laughs> Just so you, you know, know. You know, i got to shout out to a few guys. I, I, I really... Uh, me not being a musky fisherman or even knowing the realm of what's big, what's small, I knew we had caught in a very nice fish. Uh, I didn't initially send any pictures around or even tell anybody until I came home from my trip. Uh huh. And uh, a real good friend of mine, uh, Jim Bolelli from here in LaSalle, Peru area, he's an avid musky fisherman. 
you know, I told him, and he's like, Joe, that's that's just that's that's a fish of a lifetime, a three <laughs> lifetime. And then, uh, you know, as social media kind of passed some pictures around, and another good friend of mine, uh, Mike Novak, he passed some pictures around to uh, some friends of his from Muskie Hunter Magazine and whatnot. And you know, I've had a few calls the last few days. It's really cool, really cool. Really, really, really blessed that uh, the whole event happened. You know, this is why we all fish. No matter if it's a musky, smallmouth, largemouth, panfish, when when you get something like this around or in your boat, I mean, man, that's what we do it for. Yes, it is. Yeah, Jim Sarek does a nice job on musky hunter. Uh, Matt Horvath first got a hold of me and said, Bob, did you see this? And he sent me a picture of it. We're out to dinner, and I'm looking at the fish, and I'm looking at the 60-inch, you know, knowing it's a 60-inch fish. My biggest is 56 and a half, and the biggest uh -huh. I've had in the boat is 57 and a half. So consequently, we've been in the presence of these big fish. And we were sitting there talking about it at dinner. I said, that, that's a, a solid 55 to 57-pound class fish. And Joel Soldati called me today. That's who put you and I together. And Joel and I have spent the uh, time in the boat together. Joel's quite the fisherman. He's a lot of fun. And Joel calls uh -huh. me and he says, he says, hey, Professor, I've got a question for you. He says, the length and the girth, if I give it to you, can you do the math? And I said, sure, we can do that real easy. So he pulled the, pulled the numbers for me. We did the math. And, you know, obviously there's a little bit of freeboard in it, but you're talking about a fish, 57-pound class fish. It's a monster. That's a big fish. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, we, you know, as bass fishermen, I rarely would ever carry anything to size and measure something like this. So just the fact that uh, you guys are all so excited, I mean, that excites me. I, I mean, really, it'll take me some time, and I'm sure Paul's having the same feelings that I am to really reflect on just how big a fish and how neat a catch this was for the both of us. No, 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 um, no, 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 we're, we're not excited, we're mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'm sure there'll be some doubters out there, too, and, uh. and I respect that. As a trophy bass fisherman, you know, we see and hear big pictures and big fish stories, and I get it. Um, you know, here again, we, we, neither one of us are setting out to try to get any records or any notoriety. We're just two guys that happen to luck upon a, a really nice catch. You get doubters out there, just tell them to go catch their own fish. It's as simple as that. <laughs> this this, this world's <laughs> full of these people. The truth of the matter is, is you've had an experience that few on the planet will ever have. You guys were genuinely cautious with the fish. You told me in the off-phone conversation that you measured the fish with string in the boat. You took your cord out of your hood and you measured the girth of the fish and didn't even get the numbers until you were back at shore. So you did it yeah. right. You did it totally right. Now, the only thing you didn't do in this whole thing is give me the GPS points. <laughs> you know what? I'd be happy to tell anybody where that spot was. No. <laughs> As a bass fisherman, uh, we study contour maps all over when we go to these new lakes and these tournaments. And, you know, I, I've been sitting here watching your program tonight, and it's very informational and helpful. And that last little segment you got on about uh, the spawning areas and whatnot, and that that's exactly where we caught this fish. It, yep. She was in a traditional post-spawn spot. That's exactly right. And, you know, I've, I've said it thousands of times. I've spoke to seminar groups all over the United States and in Canada, and I've said it thousands and thousands of times. Folks, fish by science. If you fish by science, you'll be able to repeat what you do. And it's a scientific fact that these big females travel into spawning areas to spawn. And when they're done, guess what? they got to recover. Then they got to enter back into the lake system again, and they start to, you know, to go into their summer patterns. But you guys hit a giant. You hit a big fish. Thank you. Very thank big you. fish. I want to thank you for coming on the show with us, and I'm going to hold you to that video. So let's get that video. I want to see it. Let's get it on the show. We'll get you back, and uh, maybe we can get both you and your partner there together at the same time, and we can hear his side of the story, like why you didn't let him catch it. <laughs> yeah, awesome. He did catch it. He did catch it. I just got the bite. So it was definitely a team effort. It was really cool. Oh, goodness gracious. Not bad whatsoever. Hey, listen, thanks for coming on the show. We'll, uh, we'll chat down the line. And congratulations. Awesome. Thank you. You bet. Thanks bye bye. Thanks for having me. Yep. Goodbye. Hi, everyone. Bob Mesa Comer here for Grant Rods. You know, musky fishing's a tough deal. 
and the job's not done till she's in the bag. Well, Thank how you do you again. do that? You bet. It's pretty simple. Uh, all right, you need big hey, dog rods nice from Grant Rods. For really your next cool. ride, Thank call you very much. Bye bye. 847-577-0848. Building custom rods since 1983. Oh, look at that. Oh, big fish. Big fish. Is that over here? Oh, that is a 50 fish. <laughs> Folks, you're seeing it right now. My 100th just came in the net at Witch Bay Camp. Holy smokes, Rocky. He ate that thing. The summer sun never sets upon the Alaskan pike of the Yunoka, in the heart of breathtaking Alaska. Evenings will be shared reliving the battles of Monster Pike. The midnight sun trophy pike hunt is on aboard the 67-foot luxury houseboat, and you're in command. If you're not, you should be. Contact the Midnight Sun Trophy Pike Adventures by calling 800-440-7453 or email them at mstpa50 at gmail.com. Hey guys, last week we put the word out as we have been doing for fish catch pictures and I know most of you guys were pretty impressed by a 60 inch musky. I can tell you I was, that's for sure. But we have a couple of pictures that were sent in to us. I want to talk about them just briefly. Uh, John Haynes was uh, really kind enough to, uh, to send us over some of his pictures. And um, I want to take just a second to show you what we got here. Let me do this. Here's just one of them. He got on a smallmouth bite. Um, I don't have the information right in front of me right now. It was, uh, I think they were doing 8 ounce tube jigs fishing smallmouth. So, like I said, he definitely got them dialed in. And he's a guide. And I hope we can get him on the show going down the line and get some more information because this gentleman can certainly put the people on fish from what I see. And uh, man, my hat's off to these guys that have the skill sets to do that. Just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. This is Russ Darren, and um, again, he was out fishing in that extremely cold weather that we had. Uh, if you guys remember last weekend, it wasn't exactly a pleasurable event to be on the water and to pull fish like this uh, he's talking five pound class walleyes in this I believe and absolutely incredible um, there's another guy that I showed you last week I just teased you with a little bit of his pictures um, he's a good friend of mine from Chicago he's fished with me before he's a smallmouth fisherman Jim Gracca sends these to us, and um, my hat's off again to Jim. He makes me jealous. He gets to go fish all these spots and catch all these fish. So um, with that being said, uh, it has been my pleasure to bring you the show tonight. Uh, we got a little rough start on it. I'll fix that. And um, that being said, we had some fun. Uh, we talked to Randy up at uh, Osborne Bay Century Lodge, got to know them a little bit, got to know a little about the smallmouth fishery and what we do up there to catch those fish. We got a chance to talk to, uh, talk to John about, uh, about some of the, the fishing that's going on on Sabascong Bay and how you could deal with or cope with some of the elements that are on Sabascong Bay. And then, of course, 60-inch muskies. Who doesn't like 60-inch muskies? I can tell you I do. And uh, it's just, it is what it is. Our pictures were pictures, so if you would, folks, tune in next week. We've got some, uh, we've got some guests lined up for you. i got a lady coming on the show. It should be entertaining. Uh, I did get a hold of Kevin Goldberg. Kevin Goldberg's going to come on a little bit down the line. I haven't got a chance to get a hold of Scotty Peterson yet. I'll do that this week. So we'll start getting that arranged. But expect another good show next week. Um, it is just, uh, it's without question my pleasure to bring you guys this show. And in the meantime, just enjoy what you're looking at and do me a favor. Pre spread the word, if you would, for fishing sticks. Try to get people out there to help us grow. Try to get people to chime in. Try to get people to like our page, follow what we're doing. And in the meantime, if you would, just go kick a little tail.
and have some fun. Folks, this is Bob Mesa Comer for Fish and Sticks saying thanks. We'll see you next week.